Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to Crochet Podcast, episode 82. Thanks so much for inviting me over. If you are new to this channel, my name is Krista and that is my used to be secret yarnery. So if you're into yarn or crochet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and the notification bell beside that so you don't miss out on any awesome tutorials and content just like this. It has been a while since my last podcast, so I have a ton of finished objects. These are my latest, it's my latest love. So I'm just going to jump in, not necessarily chronologically, I'm going to tell you about this little hoodie cowl first, which I love and I can tell you a million reasons why I love it, well at least five or six, with matching mitts, fingerless gloves. So cute, so cute. Look, you can see all those nice stitches, they work up really fast and if you've made a pair, tell us in the comments below how fast they were for you. I've heard from a few people they've already finished more than one pair. It's their new favorite, so you will find out why. They work in a spiral. I'm going to pull this down. So this cowl here, let's talk about the cowl. It is the same stitch as the gloves, worked in a spiral around and around, and you can wear it just as like, let me hop up a bit. I'm feeling short. There we go. <laughs> oh, look at sun. Ah! Thank goodness for sun. Okay, so here it kind of goes like a really nice big chunky cowl. And then if you're chilly or you know it's getting to be nighttime, you can kind of just whip it up and be super cute. Be like, oh, what is it, me? Yeah, adorable, right? So this is the granny in a spiral, the silver granny in a spiral. It is very similar to the silver granny stitch. It's an alteration of it. And it just works in a spiral around and around and around. So it is in the round, but you don't do joining or anything like that. You just keep going and you mark your first block of each round with a stitch marker. So that is really, really great and fabulous. And this is with a nine millimeter hook. The gloves are with a six millimeter hook. So both these patterns are already available over on the channel, secretyarnery.com. And I love them. And this yarn color also is linked in the pattern and in the description box of the videos. There is right and left handed for both. No, this is coming out still. This is coming tomorrow. I've already filmed it, I have to edit it. These are already out, so you can start on these today. You can start on this tomorrow. Does that make sense? And there's a link to this color underneath of the videos because this color, I'm loving it. Like, doesn't it just say deliciousness? It's so great. Anyway, so this is my latest finished objects. Now let me think how it was chronologically. Putting the hair back up, my usual, my go-to style. <laughs> yeah. And having a cup of tea. What's in your cup? This is in mine. So this is Caricho Gold from Amazon, and I love it. I'll put a link to it down below too. It is my favorite tea, absolutely. Still quite affordable in the West unlike my coffee, which is not affordable in the West. So go ahead and grab yourself a box of that if you feel like it, so we can sip along together. I love it. It's just plain black tea, nothing fancy. No mixing, nothing light, nothing flowery, black tea. I love it. Let me bring over some whips. Oh, well I can start with that. Pre-whip. You can't really see totally, but I have whip shelves right there. So all the crochet that I finish, my goal is to plunk it on those shelves over there. So then I know what I'm going to talk to you about. But I put some up that looked cute, but now I have to bring it down. Not that it doesn't still look cute, but can't reach it. This cutie loving it. Do you love the colors or what? It's a love-hate. I get it. I know it. But I love it. It reminds me of, like if I had a Volkswagen van, you know those Westvalias, this would be my interior. Like this would be one of my sofa cushions inside my, West, my what's it called? I want to say Bougainvillea. <laughs> the Volkswagen van. Is it Westvalia? Weston. There it is, Westphalia. That's the kind of van I'd have. <laughs> 
That took about 10 minutes, I'm just saying. Okay, so this would be in my Westphalia and I would love it. I'd have curtains to match, I'd do the whole thing. And this pattern is just basically nine of my double daisy dish square, dish cloths. And it has a two row double daisy in the center and two rows of granny square. So I just did them up to the two rows. Let me fold that back for you, like that. So I did it this big, did them that big, just two rows of granny after the two rows of petals and join them together, join as you go and turned it into this pillow. Then at the back, I just did a circle to square and into a granny square and just made it bigger. So that's the back. And that's the front. Cute, right? And then to join it together, to join my pieces together, there it is. This is my new way of doing it. I just join in a single crochet. Can you see that? In a slightly different color. So there's no buttons. Like if you're laying on it or using it, there's no buttons. And if you're coming to like unpick it, you can see exactly where to unpick it like exactly right there and I have the tail inside so you just undo that one stitch take apart the, the single crochet and here I did a knot so the yarn is not going to come loose I'll tuck it back inside the cushion put in a laundry bag throw it in the machine and voila you're done so using a slightly different colored yarn is my tip of the day trust me you want to do that so that's one and it is from the Daisy a washcloth tutorial, double daisy. And the good thing about the double daisy washcloth is this all kind of turns into a scrubber. You can kind of like bunch it up and you have knobbly bits there to do scrubbing with in your pots. So that is my favorite all purpose forever dishcloth. And this I just did in sugar and cream. Cream and peaches, peaches and cream. That cotton yarn you buy on the big spools. So I use it for my kitchen. So that is a finished object. We're gonna call it number one. I'm gonna pop it on its own shelf. Good. Then what happened, and I'm gonna to try to go a bit chronological. I need tea. Oh, I didn't bring my hats. I'll have to do another hat, to, hat podcast next time. I have one hat here. This is my, uh, I don't even know what you call it, <laughs> basic beanie, but it is with two strands of yarn and a seven millimeter hook. I was cold, so I kind of think this is like tequila sunrise. You know, it's kind of like, you know, Mexican breakfast. <laughs> yeah, so that is, it's not a tutorial, it is not a podcast, I just made it. And then I made a whole bunch of different ones for the kids, different colors, and that's what I didn't bring here because the kids are all kind of using them everywhere, so I will put that on a different shelf for next time. After that, what happened? I gotta put my hair back up. After that, still on a cold streak. Was it a cold streak? I think I went on to mushroom tissue covers. Oh, I didn't bring all of those either, but I have enough of them to show you. Oh, I have more around. I should get more of them from around. Anyway, this is the gist. I have two here, but I really should have more because they're really, really pretty. So it is a tissue roll. You take out the center cardboard and it's basically like a little mushroom, little mushroom house like that. So then whatever tissue you want, you can just kind of pull a piece out two hands, that's the difficult part. And you have your little tissue for like dabbing your nose or fixing whatever you need. Kids, grubby mitts, spills, whatever. And it keeps it looking nice and cute. So I made a whole bunch of these. This is the rainbow version, obviously. And then I did some with buttons. So this is salmon with camel color and little buttons on the top. Now let me get you the other ones because they look so cute. This is my favorite for obvious reasons. Look how cute that is. So this is like my mint green with white and little baby pearls on it. 
So I keep this in my filming area if I need a little tissue, so cute. And then I also have some in the bathrooms, my kids' desks, they're all over the house. So those are great. That, this is a pattern, by the way, on my uh, website, secretyourhonor.com. It is not a tutorial yet, but it's on the list for like November. Now in the mushroom theme, because I got a bit on a roll, I made these really cute little mushroom door stops. <laughs> so I have a bunch of doors, you know, they just kind of like swing shut halfway, like they don't stay open all the way, and it's a bit annoying, or the wind comes and they slam shut. So I made little mushroom, uh, ca uh, mushroom caps, mushroom covers, to go over top of just regular uh, tins. So this is chickpeas. I had a bunch of chickpeas, and I'm, I'm not really that much into chickpeas. So I have a bunch of chickpea cans now all over my house to hold open doors. Very, very interesting. So my husband, he had, like, for his closet, he has these two doors, like, a, you know, like French doors into his own closet. So one stays open, and one, the one that you use, is always kind of shut. So you're always kind of like squeezing by this little tiny French door, and it's like, just keep the other one open. So when I was making these, he moved over this big basket of like, like a big, was it a laundry basket? Like a big thing, and to hold his door open. So I took that as a subtle hint. I made him a mushroom, a mushroom can, opened his door, it's been there ever since. So that's my husband asking for crochet without asking for crochet. So these are everywhere, they're so handy. I have them in my kitchen, I have them in the bedrooms, I have them in the bathrooms. Any door that you wanna actually keep 100% open. If your door's a bit heavy, you could put a little ring of glue glue gun uh, a little trail around the bottom so it'd be a little more sticky or you could glue an anti-slip piece underneath it but they're heavy enough for my doors if or you could use a bigger can which would be really cute another thing i want to do is make one like pail size for a footstool because you could put a little cushion at the top like inside here you could pat it and have it more domed as like a footstool so i'm thinking like with those big paint buckets like the 20 liter ones be so cute, right? Anyway, I haven't done it, Not, I mean, that is like years from now, but I thought that would be really cute to do. So I have a bunch of these in all different colors, so my whole house is like mushroom land, for real. I went on a bender. What happened next? Oh, there's one upstairs, too. Okay, well, I'm gonna show you those ones next time. But I have a whole hot water bottle thing that has to be next time. So hats and hot water bottles. Next time, we're gonna be into the H's. So I'll be telling you about that next time. Then what happened? I think I went into scarves. I was chilly and cold. Oh, I have another scarf upstairs too. So I made three coronation scarves. The first one out of gorgeous gray something, natural fiber, alpaca something. Really nice, a little bit, you know what I mean, ticklish. Not scratchy, but not well, maybe it's noticeable. Do you know what I mean? If it's around your neck, you're like, oh yeah, that's something around my neck. So I'm like, wouldn't it be great just in acrylic? Do you know what I mean? Like, so it's nice to be like, oh, I want fancy yarn, I want a fancy scarf. There's something to be said for good old acrylic. It's soft, it's cozy, and it doesn't like scratch you. And my idea for it, I was watching Seinfeld at the time, the old reruns, and I wanted to do the Seinfeld, the Jerry. <laughs> So this is the Jerry. Let me hop up again. That is the Jerry. You know how you poke it through and you're like, oh yes, I'm a collegiate. Hmm? So I made them, I wanted skinny and I wanted long. So this is my coronation granny scarf pattern. Super cute and like nice. Plus you could also just wear it like the other way. Just like, you know, as people would wear a scarf or however you wear it. So this was my second one. Wore it so much, could never find it. Whenever I take it off, I would fold it up like that, lay it somewhere in my house, and then I couldn't see it. I'm like, where is it? I don't know. I looked for it every single day, and I'm like, you know what? I need one in blue so I can see it. <laughs> so it was, the blue is the way to go. It's a bit longer, but same deal, you do the jerry. Or I, I'm sure there's a name for it. If you know the proper name for doing this to your scarf, let me know. I call it the Seinfeld or the Jerry. So this kept me through the winter because you could just kind of keep it on you all the time and it was nice and 
cozy and comforting, but still not too big. Like I wasn't wearing a blanket, but I really did enjoy it a lot. Oh, is that covering up my microphone? Sorry. All right, so these were great. So this is a tutorial and a pattern already. So that is tick, 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 done off the list. And definite fashion need. This is the coronation scarf. And I also did, where's that? Is that a finished object? It does not necessarily look like a finished object because it has yarn on the top. I don't know why it has yarn on the top. Oh, because I was doing something else with the yarn. Okay, great. This is the fabulous Coronation Baby, oh, look at the sun. Hello, sun. This is the Coronation Baby Blanket. So I just did a little small one like you do for a gift for a little baby. Good for a car seat or stroller, you know, keeping in the car. Newborns, really, really cute. And the pattern is super easy to remember. It's heads and crowns. So you do heads one row and you do crowns the next. So it's a two row repeat, but you always know what you're doing. And the stitch looks super, am I showing you the wrong way around? I feel like I am. The stitch is really pretty to look at. It's a bit lacy, but it, I don't know, it just looks delicate and so nice. So I really enjoyed this stitch a lot. So this is scarves. I am also am working on a pattern for fingerless gloves in the stitch and the scarf. So love the coronation. This is coming out September, I want to say. September, October. I'm not really sure how I figured it out, but I did a whole schedule for myself for one tutorial a week, blah, blah, blah. So this is the other blanket that will be coming out. This is the Palm Springs Granny. Isn't that just gorge? I love it. So this is the Palm Spring Granny. And this stitch will be coming out also. It's also part of our cowl. This stitch is part of our cowl. That pattern and tutorial is also out already. And I love it a lot. It's a one row repeat and you know what you're doing every single row. So it's really, it's a good one for watching TV, hanging with friends. Like you don't have to pay a lot of attention to it. And it looks, let me hold it for you again. It looks really nice and fancy. Like it looks delicate and clever and it's just a one row repeat. So it's right in there with the sober, the drunken, the tipsy, the pin curl. And now the granny, the, the Palm Springs granny. So this will be coming out also September, October, depending on how that one works out. I feel like I have more. I will have the hats, didn't bring them, and I have the hot water bottle. I'll give you a little, a little glimpse of the hot water bottle. Do you want a glimpse of the hot water bottle? I can show it to you a bit. Let me have another sipper. So cute, right? So I've done a whole bunch of these little tiny one row grannies. So just the one row. And then continuous join as you go to form them up into a little square. So the first, this is the first one I did. So it's not the end result. The end result, I'm doing one row less. So if you kind of shake this one down, you can pretty much just skip over that last row and have it a bit more snug. So in the keeping that crochet stretches, that is my new design. But I will be showing you this in another upcoming podcast when I have all the rest of them down here. I made a bunch. So news of the week. Kids are going back to school. That's exciting. So I'm imagining in a week or two, I'll have time a little bit here, a little bit there with my kids being educated by someone else. So that's great. And the weather is warming up. It is highs of about 20, 22 to 23 every day, which is good, but it's usually not sunny like this. Hello, see that gorgeous sun over there? So when it gets sunny like this, see it's in the afternoon, it's like almost five o'clock and now it gets sunny. So it's not the hot sun, it is, but it's still sunshine, counts. So whenever it's sunny, we tend to run outside, which is great. Trying to be organized for the rest of the year, September, October, November, and December, getting kind of like a schedule of the tutorials. I have a, my filming list is insane. There's so many tutorials to film. So kind of factoring it out to 
what I can do, like if I do one tutorial a week, what is that, tut to what is that tutorial going to be? So working all that out, and it's not that many tutorials. <laughs> I mean, it is, but if you, it really helped me just to see which ones I need to do. So the cowl will be coming out. There'll be a new cowl stitch every two weeks, including um, putting the border on each one, on each block, and then joining them. That'll be a separate, two separate videos. So one for putting the edges on the blocks, and a second one for joining them together, and then a third one for putting a border on. Don't know what the border looks like yet, but we'll get there. So that is every two weeks until that's done. It should be done the first week of December. So if you are wanting to make that blanket as a gift, there is time to do that. I will do my best to uphold that schedule. And the next one's already filmed. I just have to edit it. Super excited about that. And then get the rest of them going. And then every other week, so when it's not a cal, it'll be a new project. So the tissue, the mushroom tissue cover, the blankets, things like that. The cowl, the cowl is coming out tomorrow. Yay! And there's already a written pattern for the cowl on the website if you want to check that out. Oh, website news. Now, here we go. I know lots of you are not uh, pattern buyers. You're not into the patterns, but for I know lots of you are. So if you are, epiphany. Anyway, I registered Secret Yarnery as Secret Yarnery Limited in London. So now we are a UK-based company with UK-based uh, payment gateways, which is in the middle for everybody. So it's still close to me and it's still close to everybody else. It's kind of a normal, in your normal purchase patterns to shop there. So that solved a lot of problems. And now also, I have applied and gotten Amazon Pay. <laughs> which is super great. So then all you have to do is kind of log in with your Amazon and Amazon uh, just kind of, you don't have to enter any of your details basically. Amazon has your details and Amazon takes your money and then they slowly trickle their money over this way. So that is an easy way for most everybody to pay, although I know it's not PayPal, but I love Amazon. <laughs> So that is up and working now. To get that going, I had to put all of the currency on my website into pounds. So the currency on my website is British pounds. So I reduced the prices to three pound 50, which is about the same as $4.75. So it's the same price, looks cheaper, same price, and it works pretty much all over the world. I'm trying to think of what I should tell you now and what I should save for next time. <laughs> I have t-shirts coming out, a lot of them, like 15 t-shirts, t-shirt designs. They're not ready yet. So that'll be a separate podcast coming up and I'm super excited. They are adorable. Can't wait for all that. And what else? I know there's so many things, right? But I felt like I just had to come in and talk to you instead of just feeling overwhelmed that there's too much to tell you. So that's what I decided to do today. So that's about it for me. I am slugging along, trying to get organized for the fall, my little amp up season. And what are you up to in September? Can't wait to hear all about it. Tell me in the comments down below. So thanks so much for inviting me over and letting me ramble on about all my hooking. And I can't wait to see yours. So have a super great day and we'll see you in the next video. Stay hooked. Looks a little terrible. Why is my hair always part in the middle? I can't see, it's probably the best. <laughs> Being blind, probably for the best. Okay. <laughs> Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to our crochet podcast episode. I have no idea. I really have to check. Where's my phone? Honestly. I knew there was a reason I was supposed to write it down. 81. So we're 82. Okay. <laughs> now fix the hair again. Maybe I'm supposed to have like a little tendril hanging out. Is that what you're supposed to do? To be like, nice. <laughs> Lord help us all. Okay. That's how you're supposed to look, isn't it? Like. You know, like you tried a little. Okay. No? That's gonna be a lot to edit, I'm telling you. 
I don't even know. I was going to write it down. How do I even write it down? It wouldn't even fit on the page. There's so much to put on the page. But now I can put down hats, hot water bottles, and slippers. That's for next time. How do you keep track of your notes? Do you have like a note system? I'm starting to use Trello. It's a bit confusing. It's not confusing, but like they reformatted it a bit. I'm not, I'm like, what? Um, but that's handier. And what else? I have pieces of paper. I have books. How do you keep track of what you're doing? Let me know in the comments. I'm into all the ideas. What I feel like I need to do is paint an entire wall with chalk, mask it out into sections, and just like throw post-it notes at it until I know what I'm doing. <laughs> anyway, stay hooked. If it's not 82, I'm going to cry. That's all I'm saying.